Hello, 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 and welcome to the Varietal Show. My name is Rory, and you're watching Varietal Literature's YouTube channel, a cozy corner of the internet for narrative. If you're watching this live, you can join us in the live chat and throw in your own ideas for what we're doing today, because what we're doing today is we're using a solo tabletop RPG about herding cats to write a little story, a little tale, something. We'll see what comes out of it, really. If you're not watching it live, though, the big benefit you have is you can run off <clears throat> and uh, down to the description and click on the timestamps to jump ahead to whatever interests you the most, even if you just want to hear what we came up with in the end. Um, <clears throat> as far as uh, the chat goes, uh, it goes vibrantly. They're already chatting in there about their lives and favorite movies and so on. Um, but don't worry, when we get to the writing, laser focused on the stream, you'll see. Um, <laughs> Witchery, uh, hello, and thank you for watching. Uncle Kitty's here, Tammy's here, uh, Jumpstore is here, and GS and Zombie Wolf. I think that's all I see. Sorry if I missed you if you didn't. Um, thanks for coming back and joining in on the stream. Uh, Tammy, I, I'm hoping that uh, your shoulder's being kind to you. I know you're waiting on that that uh, procedure. Um, Witchery, I, I hope uh, the rest of the herd is doing fine after your losses. And uh, Uncle Kitty, I, I did notice last stream that you mentioned you. This would be the last week you could regularly join in at the time that I'm live. You will certainly be missed. I hope you're able to... Uh, get back here as soon as you're able but of course life comes before streams <clears throat> and zombie wolf i hope you're cooking up a good fun fact for us and jump store are you drinking tea today and if so what kind uh okay well no reason for me to faff about let's get to this to the uh subject of tonight All right, if you're coming to here, it's because you want to know what this show's about. Um, and what it is, is it's called Lit Games, hashtag Lit Games. Lit Games stands for Literature Games. Uh, it's my kind of catch-all for things like solo tabletop RPGs, games I invent, games I haven't played in a while that I've been considering playing, like uh, the dice that's named after me but I didn't create. That's for story ideas. I used to do that a few times. Lots of different things. A lot of it is itch.io games, which are indie tabletop RPGs. A lot of them are solo, but not all of them. Um, <clears throat> and um, we basically use it as a jumping off point to write. Uh, this is a stream about writing for people who like writing. Um, <clears throat> and the game that we're going to play tonight to write about is called Kitty Corrallers. It requires... to find my dice. Where are they? Oh, they're there. They were all hiding in the corner. Uh, 3d6. And if you're not a nerd for dice, that's just regular dice. You need 3d6 for this game. Uh, you really do need the three. You can't just re-roll one three times. I mean, I guess you could. You could write it down, whatever else, but it would be a lot more frustrating. Uh, Jumpstore says, I'm drinking tea by Numi called Turmeric Amber Sun. Sounds delicious. Uh, Jumpstore says, if you can have turmeric, I highly recommend it. I can. The, um, <clears throat> um, the rules of this game, given that the premise is just about, like, this silly little premise of taking cats across planes, I guess, um are pretty complicated and I've read them I'm gonna say about 10 times now I'm not a hundred percent I understand them all uh, that might be down to me that might be how they're described could be a little more straightforward I don't know 
But I did have a hard time <laughs> wrapping my head around the rules. Uh, but, and I know Pathfinder, so it's not like I'm bad at reading rules. Um, <clears throat> but I would, um, I think I get the gist of it at least, front, in case anyone's worried. And also to sort of frame, if you want to make recommendations, no ill fate will befall any kittens. The game does seem to imply that can happen by some of its prompts. We're going to be ignoring that. It's not the kind of <laughs> vibe I want for the stream. Um, <clears throat> if we, it, the game is premised around losing kittens, um, but that's fine. They go and run off and are happy hunting mice. Um, <clears throat> Anyways, you need 3d6. You're a wrangler of kitties. You start with a certain number of kitties. I'm going to do this on easy. We're not going to get through a whole game because you have to go through 10 prompts to go through a whole game, even on easy mode. Uh, and that's much longer than we have on the stream. Um, but you basically just sort of write about what happens based on the prompts you get. The same as most of these games work. It has its own unique things. We're gonna build a character. We'll do a little round together, just so that we understand it all together. And then we'll start writing. So let's make our character. By let's make our character, I mean let me drink some water. Uh, so there is a character sheet in this. I guess I will show you where it is here. It's down at the bottom. Uh, there's a character sheet here for the easy trail. You start with 50 in your herd. And the um, long haul trail, where you start with 80 in your herd. Um, and then there's a bunch of little things here that modify. Like I said, I think I understand them all. It's very possible I don't. So if you're coming here for a tutorial in the game, I apologize. I'm probably not very trustworthy. But I've copied over the Easy Trail uh, character sheet in a much less pretty form, but more practical for our purposes here. Um, <clears throat> and the first thing we have to do is come up with a background type. But as per usual... The real first thing I have to do is get chat to come up with a name for me. Because <laughs> I'm very bad at names in writing. Um, so, while you guys think about names, maybe what will help you decide what we should name our character is if I read you the backgrounds. Now, unlike other games, these backgrounds have mechanical implications. So we do need to actually decide on a background. There's six of them. We can roll for it. If there's indecision in the chat, I'll roll for it. Um, but I'm going to read you our options right now. <clears throat> our first option is Wiley. Thinks outside the box. Um, and then in the brackets, it has sort of some other things that might line up or describe that. Like the old timer, the rogue, so on. A thinker. <clears throat> a studied approach. The scholar, the savant. Number three is fit. A physical approach. The muscle, the gymnast, etc. Oh, Zombie Wolf says, what kind of creature are we just human? Uh, it's not defined. I assume we're human. Um, that's what I know how to write. So depending on the choice, if we recommend something else too far outside of that, I might be like, I don't really know how to write that. Um, <clears throat> naive. You don't know. Uh, what you don't know can't hurt you. The youngster, the aristocrat. Number five is unnatural, a supranatural approach. So like a magician or a mad scientist or somebody in touch with the weave or whatever. Uh, and then number six, a naturalist, one with nature, a druid, a botanist, etc. So we have to pick one of those. If there isn't like an obvious standout that people want to do, I will roll the dice and we'll decide it randomly. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I'll give you guys a chance to think about it. Well, I do a very brief description of how this works. So you guys can keep thinking about names and the tropes that you want our character to align to. So the way it works is that you start with um, a certain number of kittens in your... Uh, pack 
every turn, some kittens are going to run off. Uh, it's designed so that that ha will always happen. Uh, but you can do things to sort of get a bit of them back and so on. You can keep playing the game if you hit zero kittens, because actually what that number represents, the 50 or whatever, is how many kittens you can lose that aren't the minimum number of your herd. So in that way, it's kind of impossible to truly fail this game unless there is a sort of a way that it happens, but it's unlikely. Uh, even if we get to zero, we'll still technically in the fiction of the game be returning with a herd of cats. It's just we can't lose any more than those 50. Um, <clears throat> the... Um, uh, the way it works is as we go forward, we're going to roll D6s. And we use them in a few different ways. So sometimes we just roll a D6, see what the results are, and then roll another D6 and see a little bit more and whatever else. It's a lot of rolling of D6s. But <clears throat> once you are on a prompt, an event, what you do is you roll three D6, you choose two of those d6 and put one aside but you don't toss it you add those two d6 together <clears throat> and that is your focus roll now your focus roll can have modifiers on it and things that add to it and detract from it and so on but what your focus roll does is it informs this is what i mean by why i got lost well it's probably better for me to just play around your focus roll both is how many kittens run off that turn and where what specifically happens in your event prompt because your event prompts go up to 12. The way that you start to lose this game is if you hit zero they start adding numbers onto that roll total and the number can get high enough that you will be your totals will be above the limit which is usually 12. So you see how the first event here in Mother Nature is formidable. Um, there's a result for two to three, four to five, so on, all the way up to 12. But there's modifiers that you can get building up on your sheet based on things that go wrong that add more numbers. And when you hit zero every time you roll, I think you're adding another one um, to that total, up to, I think, 10, which means that for almost any roll you make, um, you won't get any result because if you roll above 12, nothing happens. Uh, so you stop being able to play the game. So that took forever for me to figure out, by the way. <laughs> um, but uh, I did figure out that's sort of the fail state of the game. Um, <clears throat> but the way, yeah, so the way it works is you, you'll roll higher numbers, get you better event results, but it means you've lost more kittens. So that's the push and pull of the game. And then your background can do more to modify that. And then there's some finer detail rules that I just don't think I understand. And so we're just going to have to push past them. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um... Tammy recommends Marari. Let me know if I'm mispronouncing that. One thing I do know from knowing a bit about languages is that the English R, which I think is erotic R, but it could be wrong, uh, is actually extremely unusual. And so names, which I think that's a Hebrew name, um, may not use that same R, in which case I may be doing that wrong. Sorry if it's not a Hebrew name, it might not be just seems like a conjugated that way uh gem store says naive makes sense that we'd lose those kittens okay gotta vote for naive zombie wolf says wily could it be fun to see our character going to catch the kittens that's that's true oh gs says it's a hebrew name as well okay um well maybe i'm right um uh wily Kitty. I 
happened to my my window? There we are. Oh, okay, Marari is right. Okay. Well, it does sound pretty. You're correct about that. Okay, so we had a vote for Wiley and a vote for Naive. I'll just do a, a coin flip for it. Um, red for Wiley, blue for Naive. <laughs> Sorry if I blew up the headphones. Bounced off my monitor. <laughs> Maybe I'm just not coordinated? There we go. I got it that time. It's red, which I think was said was Wiley. All right. Wizard of Oz is having difficulties. Don't look behind the curtain. Indeed. Okay, so our background type then is Wiley, which we'll have to sort of make sense of for ourselves. Just means thinks outside the box, so we picked the hardest one, really. <laughs> um, and uh, we may as well just get to the game, because the rest of these stats come as we go, so... <clears throat> let's, uh, let's get to it. Let's do a little introduction. Marari was winding her curls around her finger. In the dusty sunrise. Of Cattle Meow Ranch. They actually have a name for the ranch, but I forget what it is. Jumpstore says, who doesn't like a challenge? That's a good question. Uh, maybe me? I don't know. I mean, I guess I must. Why would I be writing and running a stream at the same time? Obviously, I like challenges. Uh, Marari was winding her curls around her finger in the dusty sunrise of Cattle Meow Ranch. <laughs> now it's funny. Floofball Ranch. <clears throat> How about... Uh, um, if that's a stable within it. Oh, what a cute little emoji. Zombie Wolf has there of a, a little tabby cat popping out as a cartoon from a little box. My uh, my dear Smudge was uh, having a fight from behind a window. He's not an outdoor cat, but he was having a fight with a, a cat that he definitely would not win in an actual fight with. He's out of his mind. It's like twice his size. Marari <clears throat> uh, was winding her curls around her finger in the dusty sunrise of Catalina Ranch. She was waiting for the preparations to finish in the Floofball stables. Over on the eastern acres. that looked that lined the K 
Canyon River. This would be... Is there like a an official name? I know Witchery does some... Well, I guess I don't know that you do ranching, but I know you have a farm. Um, is there like an official name for when you're moving cattle from one to the other? Like what herders are for? Or is that just herding? Like, does that process have a name? <clears throat> Cattle drive. Thank you, Uncle Kitty. <clears throat> this would be... Marari's first... <laughs> Kittle drive? Is that too much? Kitten drive? Should it just be kitten drive? Or are we going with the pun of kittle drive? Witchery says we call that droving, but I assume... They meant to write driving. But if not, let me know. <clears throat> Kittle. Okay. We're sticking with the puns. Okay. This would be Mirari's first Kittle drive over the... Um, give me kitten names for locations. Like uh, as many puns as you can about fields that we'd have to go over and whatever else. <clears throat> uh, this would be Marari's first Kittle drive over the plains of... <gasps> well, this is pretty bad, but... cat uh, duh. Small bean field. I like it. <clears throat> How about small bean trail? Like you can still see the imprintations of the many years of cattle, kittle driving over it. Munchkin Meadows is adorable. <clears throat> Marari was looking forward to striving to driving. I guess I should just to driving the herd up Small bean trail past Muffin Peak. Uh, uh, across the Will <laughs> Muffin Ridge. <clears throat> and down through feline flats finally settling into Munchkin Meadows. Marari was worried how she would get She would get the smaller kittens across Tiny Hiss River, which, in spite of its name, was a white water rush of ice cold of ice melt from Muffin Peaks. Are we even writing a story at this point or am I just setting up really weak puns? Yeah. 
I agree, Zombie Wolf. They have the cutest little hisses. With a yelp that echoed over the ranch, Arari knew it was time to go. The day was a bit later, and she had wished <clears throat> to be starting. That could be a much better sentence. She was starting a bit later than she had wished. But she felt she was confident that she could get the squirming, scurrying herd <clears throat> to the first camp, mostly intact. Laser Point Drive, Calico Cafe, Catnip Caverns, very good. My cat only likes toys for about a week. And then he just is done with that toy for the rest of his life. So he was really into a laser pointer and then he stopped caring about it very quickly. And so then we just put it away for a long time, like years. And I took it out and for like two days he was like, oh my god. And then after that, he didn't care again. <clears throat> okay, let's do some rolling. So we need to roll to find out on which table we roll. And then we need to roll to find out that thing we rolled for, what exactly it means. That's not a joke. Uh, so the first thing we do is roll a d6. Okay, I rolled a six, which means we roll on the events table three. So I'm rolling another one and I got a five. Uh, the event is called Mass Hysteria. Now, before I even look at it, I roll all three. And we got to pick two. So, I may as well, I, I may not do this every time because I imagine chat's going to be very indecisive about this, but we rolled a six, six, and a one. Now, remember, the higher the number, the better this event, whatever it's going to be, will be. However, um, that is also how many cats run away. Sometimes the bad events at the lower end of the scale um, also mean cats run away. <laughs> so it's a bit of a balancing act, but I, you don't have to wait to look at the event. I'm just doing that for tension here. What do you think? Should we go high or low? Should we keep the 6 and the 6, go with 12? Or should we keep a 6 and a 1 and go with 7? 12 or 7, what are we keeping? <clears throat> If Roy had rolled three sixes. Uh, jump store says seven. Okay. And immediately after, Zombie Wolf says 12. <laughs> Let's see if any consensus emerges. I'm going to wait a minute. 
I mean, this is not, you guys aren't doing anything wrong. I just think it's funny because that's usually how it goes. <clears throat> okay, I think nobody else is guessing. All right. Uh, well, I'll just go with the first one I saw for now. That's not always going to be how I decide it, but seven. Oh, that's the problem. Okay, so let's read what the event says. It's going to be vague because it's on us to fill in the blanks because it's, you know, a journaling game. Um, <clears throat> why are the cats so riled up? Hackles raised and hissing everywhere. Better figure it out and fix it before things get really ugly. Okay, so chat, you're... Welcome to pitch ideas in here. Uh, what do you think has the cats riled up and hissing? Uh, the result that we went with, the seven. Oh, that's the problem, but what's the fix? We will have to roll on a consequences table, but before I do that, we need to know what the problem is. Uh, and while we do that, I'm going to subtract the kitties that got away, which was seven. Which makes this 43. A wild goose. Oh, wow. Okay, Uncle Kitty says a wild goose. The first to scurry off were the tabbies. Six in total within the first, within an hour. Which says, it's got to be a Canadian goose on this stream. Uh, I think I said it was Catadada or something. What did I say? Canada? Yeah, Canada. <laughs> I am, I'm just doing my, my tea here. The reason I was a little late is I was waiting for my water to boil. So I've been waiting for it to steep. It's probably steeped a bit too long. 34 minutes is a bit of a long steep for tea. <laughs> I forgot it was here. I also spilled some water, which is going to be really good because it's going to get cold very fast. What tea am I drinking? Uh, I'm still the basic B drinking Earl Grey. I did uh, try to look up that tea recommended last week, um, Jump Store, uh, the rose tea from Numi. Um, I couldn't find it at a price I could afford. Legit tardiness, excuse. <clears throat> uh, the first to scurry off were the tabbies, six in total within an hour. Uh, Marari shook the best treats box and did tread out into the vines to find them again. However, she made it not 20 meters before the whole herd She made it not 20 meters before the whole herd erupted in a choir of hissing and low yowls. Tabbies are probably just down in the catnip caves. 
have to circle back later. <clears throat> she muttered. Rubbed her freckled cheek before rushing back up to the road. Amidst the herd of undulating silken fur. All fluffed skyward in supposed intimidation was the tall <clears throat> neck of a Canadian goose. Tempted the cats with fish fudge. Yum. Uh, Jump Store says, ah, sorry, I didn't take the price into consideration. That's okay. I'm basically broke. I think almost anything is too much money. But um, uh, uh, I did used to, when I had a job I hated, um, have the money to buy a lot of fancy teas. And the fancy tea that we buy, which I think isn't a Canadian-specific thing, but you'll have to let me know if it is. I don't actually know. It was David's Tea. I used to buy a lot of that. Some of it is like kitschy nonsense. Like, you know, there's, I don't know, popcorn in it or something. Which, you know, it adds a flavor. But it is mostly there for kind of Instagram appeal. They also had a bunch of really interesting teas. Oh yeah, Uncle Kitty, uh, Mushishi is the name, was the show. I did look into it more. Apparently there was two generations of that show. Um, and the version I was looking at art from was the first one. It was obviously not as polished. And I was like, I remember the show being more polished. And then I discovered that there was a second series. Which also explains why that first season was a little bit confusing. <laughs> um, uh, which was an extension of it that had more polished art that was definitely familiar to me. Unfortunately, it's not on Netflix anymore and I don't have another means of doing it. Um, Zombie Wolf is talking about fish food. Spelled P-H-I-S-H from Ben and Jerry's, yeah. Um, which is named for the band Fish because Ben and Jerry are a bunch of hippies. And Fish is a hippie jam band. You know why I like Ben and Jerry's? A bunch of their flavors are certified gluten-free. Uncle Kitty said, I thought you'd seen one of them, Rory. I think there's a live action one too. Oh, is there? I didn't see that. Anyways, I like that show. That was more my pace to, to follow up on that conversation. <clears throat> was the tall neck of a Canadian goose. Its wings were spread with menace bapping the noses of the encroaching cats. as it spread its treacherous yellow beak open to holler its blood curdling howls.
the sand dragon itself. had come to harass Marari's herd. Uh, GS says, what would a kitten do with a Canadian goose? Pretty scary birds. They are pretty scary birds. I will say that. But cats have no sense of their limits. None. As far as they're concerned, the only reason why they couldn't take on another human or even a bear is because you're holding them back. <clears throat> Until it swats at them and then they'll run away and not come out for ages. The one thing, like, I've known geese since I was a very small child. They gen there are Canadian geese for a reason. There's a lot of geese around here um, at our beaches. <laughs> but um, um, the thing that I'm, I'm used to, but a lot of people who have come and visited and stuff are not are prepared for, is how big they are. I feel like you should know how big they are, but they, they're pretty big. A jump store says, how many orange kittens does this ranch contain? As many as is entertaining in the story. The uh, sand dragon itself had come to harass Marari's herd. If she did not resolve the beast quickly, then the herd was sure to spread in every cardinal direction. Ruining the drive. Uh, what do you guys want to do? With, uh, keeping in mind, not hurting any animals in any of my stories. Full stop. I mean, I can't promise that for my stuff that I've read off stream and published, but <sighs> I'm probably never going to do that. <laughs> Uh, it's not a thing I think is ever worth the cost, uh, emotional cost. Um, Uncle Kitty said one built and one goose built a nest by the truck gate at a place I used to guard, and would unleash hell on their tires if they're parked. Yeah, or at least a, a, a think you're talking about geese. Uh, okay. So we got a roll in the consequence table, but what do you guys want to do with the goose? Remember, we're looking for entertainment here. I'm going to go down to the consequence number two table, roll a d6. Lost focus for a second, but not next time. I rolled a two. Subtract third die from the herd. Oh dear. So we lose... <laughs> the six anyways. Uh, GS wants the kittens to resolve it. Uh, the prompt we specifically had to, just to make sure I'm not forgetting something. What was this called? A hiss something? Was, oh, that's the problem, but what's the fix? Okay. Uh, so I guess the extra ones we lose are the ones that uh, run it off. Jumpstore says, I actually love geese. I feed them in parks all the time. They've never been hostile towards me. They've definitely been hostile to me many times. I don't really hate any animal for that, though. Um, they're animals. They don't know what we're going to do. There's probably people that, like, throw rocks at them that look, you know, roughly like me. They're just cautious. So 
Zombie Wolf says, Rory, geese never travel alone. Maybe it's found its mate and left. I've seen some geese alone before. I'm sure there's some grim reason for it, but... Uh, but I do, uh, I do like that concept. Just let me process that for a minute. Yeah, Uncle Giddy says, geese are usually only aggressive when nesting, or hungry, or angry, or if you get too close to what they perceive to be their property, which is most of the water line of a lot of lakes in this area. <laughs> They're just kind of unpredictable. Birds in general are pretty aggressive. Um, just usually they're scared because we're much bigger, but when, as birds get more on par with our size, you get to see that dinosaur nature. <laughs> <clears throat> then the herd was sure to spread in every cardinal direction, ruining the drive. Marari was not about to lose the herd, but a straight fight with a goose might have hurt it. Or her. She didn't know what to do. And in her hesitation, a few tabbies swatted <coughs> at the gray feathers of the grand bird. It responded by arcing its neck down and nipping at their tails. Six more kittens turned and fled in its rampage. Yet, it was exactly this temporary distance that let Marari Uncle Kitty says, be sure to feed them peas instead of corn, or corn instead of bread. Yeah, try not to feed grains to birds. Uh, yet it was exactly this temporary distance that let Marari hear the bleeding cries of another bird over the other side. Of the bean road. Before the great beastly bird. Could circle back. She jogged down the embankment and found another goose. That had wound its foot in a broken old wire fence. It didn't look injured. But it was 
in great distress. Does anyone have a favorite type of bird? I notice we're talking birds. <clears throat> It pecked fluffed and batted its wings at the approaching cat master. Marari pulled up her leather jacket has a shield that smudge is saying I gotta make sure that smudge isn't knocking stuff over Marie pulled up her leather jacket as a shield and with all the nimbleness a single free hand could afford. She unwound the second goose's foot. Uncle Kitty said emus, Rory. Australia lost a war to them. Yeah, I was kind of thinking of emus there. Ravens are cool, for sure. Golden Reeves, says Tammy. I don't know what golden reeves are. GS says hummingbirds and seagulls. Seagulls are so funny. I know a lot of people really hate seagulls, and it's hard to argue against them. Seagulls are very funny, but hummingbirds are just the dearest thing. Hummingbirds don't seem like they should be able to exist. Like, if hummingbirds... If we lived on another planet, and we'd never been to this planet, and someone wrote a story about how there was hummingbirds here and described them, we'd be like, yeah, right. Good, good try. That's clearly not real. <laughs> Some store likes geese because they uh, have a lot of sort of human traits and protectiveness. The bird was as grateful as a goose has ever been and showed that. by charging at Marari. <clears throat> and painfully nipping it. Nipping at her butt as she fell she stumbled after she stumbled. Ankles over ears. In shock. Nevertheless, It quickly turned and took flight, joined soon after 
by the initial agitator. And head it off south. Marari lost about an hour herding back the kittens she could still find and pressed forward to make camp. The skies were clear out in, oh, what was, that's not how you spell skies. Um, <clears throat> neither is that. Out in, oh, there were some good field names. I'm gonna have to scroll back up. Feline flats. That's a good one. Did we lose any kitties yet? We lose kitties every turn. The number that we pick is how many kitties we lose, with the potential to lose more but get or get some back, depending on what we get. <clears throat> um, the skies were clear out in feline flats. And as the day settled into a starry night, the kittens found so much reason to not sleep. Marari slept for a few hours, but they were broken. by 37 cats zooming back and forth over her stomach with exponentially more weight per paw than should be physically possible. for an animal so small. After a night of toe bean liver punches, and a late breakfast, given to a caterwauling mass of fur indignant it had not come earlier Marari started back up on the road on the small bean road. <laughs> yeah, Jumpstore talks about how owning a cat increases your reflex speed. Uh, there's a thing, apparently when you have kids too, that's a thing, I don't have kids or any intention to have them, but the, um, um, I know that there's like the, the parents get really good at like both reading when chaos is coming, but also grabbing their kid just in time. Uh, I'm lucky enough that Smudge isn't super destructive, um, but um, he, he is a bit dumb. Okay, <clears throat> on to the next prompt. It's 
So again, roll a d6. It's a three. So we're gonna be rolling on events table two. Roll another d6. That's a four. Unfortunate luck. Now I roll three. Cats are always taking the dodge action. Okay. I don't know why I keep rolling double numbers, but I rolled two fives and a four. So the question comes again. Although this is a less significant difference, let me make sure that there is even a difference before I ask. Because it's between 9 and 10, and that might actually just be the same option. 9 and 10 is the same option. So there's nothing to ask. Uh, we'll just take the lower number then, 9. Uh, but at least it's a good one. So, so many superstitions about cats, but they can't be real, can they? 9 to 10 means it seems not all of them are. Roll bonuses 1. I'm not sure how to interpret that, chat. I'm going to need some help on that one. Um, we got unfortunate luck. It says so many superstitions about cats, but they can't be real, can they? 9 to 10, not thankfully not all of them are. However, oh, interesting. So because we chose Wiley... You've seen things that can't be explained, so we get a negative one to our focus roll, which would actually knock us down to consequences if we don't take 10. So I guess I will take 10, which is a lot of cats to lose, but I need a bonus. Yeah. Oh no, wait, to the focus roll. That means I gotta recheck some rules here. This is the part I didn't understand. Give me a second here. Focus on the creative side, Chad. I'll try to look at the mechanics. You roll three dice, you pick two, and you total up as your result. told me about this. The higher is usually better, but watch out. The more you concentrate on the road ahead, the less focus you have on your herd and some will scamper off. After you have your results, subtract it from your herd total and compare it to the event's outcomes. I can't remember where it tells me and I, I it's not worth it. There it is. Plus one, minus one to focus rolls means before subtracting the total from the herd. Plus one or negative one to result means after subtracting the whole of total from the herd. I see. Okay. So that means because we're wily, the focus roll is before subtracting from the herd. So I guess it just means we lose one less. Okay, I think I got that. Which would be eight then, because I picked nine. So, 29. 
Okay, I don't think it affects my result though. So I think we're still nine to 10 and that's how I'm gonna play it. I'm sorry if it's wrong. If you're a creator of it, I'm sure it's very frustrating. Uh, but it does mean I have to roll bonuses. Um, I don't know, chat. How do you interpret this? So many superstitions about cats. The only one I can think of is the black cat crossing your bath. What are the superstitions about cats? Why can't I say this word? Superstitions about cats. The rain in Spain falls mainly. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to look at our bonuses table. Bonuses one or two. Bonuses one. Well, actually, I think Zombie Wolf, it's a buff to us. Despite the fact it being a negative, it means we lose less cats. So it makes it even trickier to interpret. I mean, that's true, GS, but obviously that's not really the direction I'm going. <laughs> Uh, negative one to the next outcome numbers. That should make things easier tomorrow. Okay. So it's something that makes things easier tomorrow. It's a superstition that's not true. Cat steal the baby breath. Cat who hops over a corpse causes it to rise as a vampire. They have nine lives. I guess it's going to have to be the bad luck thing and the black cat's going to have to actually be good luck. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, I guess, I guess I, I have an idea for one. It's pretty straightforward, but I think it will work. Um... You guys are listing some, some superstitions I've never seen before, uh, like having a cat in a theater is good luck. I spent a lot of time in theaters when I was young, and I had never heard that one. Um, cats were thought to bring good luck to ships. Well, yeah, in the form of killing the rats, I just suspect. Suspect? What is with S words in me today? Kittens born in May have special powers. Well, that's not superstition. That's true. Um... <clears throat> After a night of toe bean liver punches and a late breakfast given to a caterwauling mass of furry of furry rascals who were quite indignant. That it had not come earlier, or I started back up on small bean road. <clears throat> somewhere on the inclined switch back to Muffin Ridge to Whittle Muffin Ridge that's what it was under the towering peaks of the Muffin Mountains. I'm all for a better cat pun on mountains, by the way. The ship cat on the Titanic actually left the ship in Ireland Harbor and carried all her kittens off with her. Good job, kitty. Witcher says, so you're saying the iceberg phoned the cat. That is, yeah, that's canon. Mountains. Damn it, why didn't I think of that? That's great. Giving up my stream. <sighs> I 
by the way speaking of cats i mentioned that he was having a fight from the other side of a window like a hero then when i picked him up i don't know if i can get a shot of this very weird angle no nope. i don't know you can barely see it but there's a uh, he i picked him up he was going wild so i like i had to grab him by the scruff as well and then he latched onto my arm and uh, dragged his teeth around my my wrist i tried to show him i was bleeding because i've heard that can help cats understand that they've hurt you and uh, he looked at me like, what is your f arm doing in front of my incredible face, Dad? So uh, he did not care. <clears throat> okay, under towering, under the towering peaks of the Rocky Mountains. Um, a strange, wild, black cat wandered into the path of the herd. Its eyes were a bit more feral than the rest, but it was unperturbed by their hissing. It stood for a moment in glory and Marari thought to herself quite unfairly just what I need Yeah, Tammy, I'm used to dogs because I, when I was up until I was about 25, I guess, I lived around a lot of dogs. And then when I, I moved out, I didn't have animals for a little while. And then I had a cat. Um, <clears throat> but I was mostly used to growing up with dogs. And with dogs, if you go like, ow, they, they're like, oh, I'm sorry, sir. Let me clean that for you. I was just trying to have fun. But with cats, you can go ow, and they usually do stop. But there's no like, oh, I'm sorry. It's like, will you shut up? I'm trying to brutalize your arm. <laughs> I love my little jerk. Um, <clears throat> it stood for a moment in glory. Catching a ray of pure sunlight. Marari only thought to herself. Witchery says, some of my cats apologize, but I am a witch. That is true. Going out and dancing with the devil in the fields. I've read the stories. That's just from European folklore. <laughs> just what I need. Bad luck. But the words had not even left her thoughts when a terrible rumble came from high above and swept a small but formidable river of rubble across the road beyond the black kitty.
once this rubble made its fuss and settled off down in the valley below the black cat crossed off the other side and away into the woods Marari raised her eyebrow. Then tipped. Her wide brimmed hat. In the direction. Of the fleeing cat. And said my apologies for my presumptions I appreciate your help she tossed a fish for it into the underbrush but this unfortunately Caused a half dozen of her finest Siamese to scramble from the pack and out of sight, stealing the fish as they went. Zombie Wolf says I let my scratch my cat scratch and bite my arms. I don't because uh, it teaches them those are toys. And then they go and scratch and bite my friends. And I don't want to have to hide them in a room when people come over. I don't like hit them or anything like that though or spray them. Or, I, I don't really use punishment in general because I have enough knowledge about behaviorism that I don't need to. But Okay. Um, it's an hour and 20. The remainder of the day was spent traversing the ridge. With emphatic pss, pss, pss. not empathic, emphatic sounds hissed out when the wilder <coughs> ones. Zombie Wolf says, well, very the easy solution is to just not have friends. <laughs> Fair enough. dim and cold before they could break trail into 
down. Oh, okay. Someone's going to know this. What is the name of the side of the mountain that doesn't get the wind? Is it the lee side? Somebody knows. I used to know this. For a while there, I was writing a book about a child soldier in a post-apocalyptic North America. And uh, there was a lot of deserts and things like that. So I used to know the terminology here, but I've forgotten it. What is the side of the mountain name of the... Also, I used to do proper alpinism. Uh, and I have books on it and stuff like that. But I've just completely forgotten. It's been too long. says I live on a plane uh is there a lot of mountains in Australia because and I only say this as a person who's never been there and all my experiences of it come from TV and on TV I never see any mountains but I feel like there must be actually that's not true I sort of see elevation in <laughs> rescuers down under but it's like cliffs not mountains zombie wolf says GS beat me to it yeah, you guys did the same time. <clears throat> the night was spent in a puddle of cuddles as each of the herd kept each other warm. and Marari as well. There are mountains down on the eastern coast and some elsewhere. Tasmania is incredibly mountainous. That's the southernmost island? Or is it a province? Isn't there a special rock in Australia? I mean, there must be. Any prominence in a land gets significance over the 50,000 years we've been wandering around them. A cluster of kittens is actually called a cloud. How cool. The next morning would prove the toughest so far. I'll end it there. Oh, Clouder. That makes more sense. <laughs> uh, it's a state. Yeah, it's the Triangle Island. Oh, it's both the state and the island. Are they states in Australia? I thought they were provinces. I didn't realize that. Well, I mean, a cluster of kittens is a little cloud, isn't it? But a clouder makes more sense. It's a good word for it. All right. Let's see what we came up with. We got through a decent amount. Um, got through two, which is more than we normally do. It's a state and the island. Hmm. I, uh, you have states and territories. I did not know that. Is Australia a republic? thought it was a colony like uh, Canada. Yeah, it doesn't matter. This is completely irrelevant. <laughs> this is just my own curiosities. <clears throat> oh, it's a federation. Okay, I didn't know it was a federation. That's news to me. Cool. I guess... I guess Canada's a federation too, isn't it? 
somebody tell me if I'm wrong about that, but yeah, our founding is called Federation Canada, so it makes sense. <clears throat> Witchery says, there's also a bit in the Constitution that says New Zealand can join Australia if they want. <laughs> I think New Zealand's probably doing pretty well for themselves, eh? Uncle Kitty says, Australia's always portrayed as so terrifying. You know, the thing about that is, all these places that are portrayed as terrifying, the Amazon, whatever else, it's only going to be terrifying if you didn't grow up there, right? Like, it's like here. You know, there are areas of BC where you can see, like, moose or you can see bears. It's really unlikely that you live here and you don't see a bear at some point or a cougar. And they're scary, I guess. But also, because they're around and you grow up around them, you know what to do for the most part. You know what to avoid. You know where not to go. Um... So, you know, you just you just don't do those things, you know. You don't run through hot, dry fields in the east of BC because you might hit a rattlesnake or whatever else. Like, it's things that you do. <clears throat> now, are there things that are, even if you grow up there, it's going to be a problem? Yeah, but they're not the things that people tend to be afraid of. They're things like mosquitoes with, you know, dengue fever or something like that. But for the most part... With a few exceptions, most animals and bugs all avoid each other. The way that I like to put it is, if you ever watch a nature documentary of like the savanna or something like that, they'll have these predators and these prey, and they mostly just hang out in a field together and don't do much to each other. And that's kind of the way it is too. Like you'll go hiking, and you'll see a cougar up on the ridge, and you know it's following you because that's what they do. But you were smart enough not to go there alone and you don't get separated and you don't, you know, tread into certain areas and you never really have a problem. <laughs> okay. Jump store says Kiwis like fruit. Kiwi is the name for um, uh, New Zealanders. Um... But it's also a fruit. It's also a bird. Which I think is in New Zealand. The fruit is good. I love kiwi. But I know some people are allergic to it. What am I talking about? I'm supposed to be reading the story. <clears throat> if you're coming to this part of the stream, it's because you want to just know what we came up with. And what we came up with was based on prompts from a solo RPG game. Tabletop RPG game. Called kitty corralers let me get you up to the front page so you know what it looks like um kitty corralers is a uh available on itch.io i should have it linked in a comment below when this video is no longer live if you want to go and deal with it of course as i all mentioned in the comments i don't have any association to any creators of solo tabletop rpgs at this point these are just things i find that i think are fun to play on stream uh it's like a 3d6 system where you basically get prompts <coughs> and those prompts um give you more prompts and then you write sort of events around them and what we did was we uh wrote events around our character marari who is a human um who is herding a bunch of cats across the land to the next you know the next ranch <clears throat> and anyways i'm going to read you that story now Marari was winding her curls around her finger in the dusty sunrise of Catol Meow Ranch. She was waiting for the preparations to finish in the floofball stables over on the eastern acres that lined the Canyon River. This would be Marari's first kittle drive over the plains and fields of central Catada. Marari was looking forward to driving the herd up Small Bean Trail across the Whittle Muffin Ridge and down through Feline Flats until finally settling into Munchkin Meadows. Marari was worried how she would get the smaller kittens across Tiny Hiss River, which in spite of its name was white water, a white water rush of ice melt from the Muffin Peaks. 
with yelp with a yelp that echoed over the ranch marari knew it was time to go she was starting a bit later in the day than she had wished but she was confident that she could get the squirming scurrying herd to the first camp mostly intact the first to scurry off were the tabbies as they traveled along the road Six in total within an hour, Marari shook the best of treats box and did tread out into the vines to try and find them again. However, before she could, she made it not 20 meters before the whole herd erupt in a choir of shh, 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 and <laughs> The tabbies are probably just down in the catnip caves. I have to circle back later, she muttered and rubbed her freckled cheek before rushing back up to the road amidst the herd of the undulating silken fur. All fluffed skyward in supposed intimidation was the tall neck of a Canadian goose. Its wings were spread with menace, bapping the noses of the encroaching cats who had encircled it. And as it spread its treacherous yellow beak open, it hollered, a blood-curdling howl. The sand dragon itself had come to harass Marari's herd. If she did not resolve the beast quickly, then the herd was sure to spread in every cardinal direction, ruining the whole drive and losing the herd. But Marari was not about to lose the herd. A straight fight with a goose might have hurt it, or more likely her, and she didn't want <coughs> to do that. But in her hesitation, a few of the tabbies, bold as they were, swatted at the gray feathers of the grand bird's fluffed breast. And it responded by arcing its neck down and nipping at their tails. Six more kittens turned and fled from its rampage. But as they spread out into the underbrush over the east side of the road, it was exactly this distance that finally let Marari hear the bleeding cries of another bird over on the west side of the Little Bean Road or Small Bean Road before the great beastly bird could circle back with the herd in tow. Marari jogged down the west embankment and found that there was another goose there and it had wound its foot into a broken old wire fence. Now it didn't look injured, but it was in great distress as it could not free itself. Nonetheless, though her intentions were good, they were not read as such by the goose. As she approached, it pecked and fluffed and batted its wings at the air. <clears throat> Marari pulled up her leather jacket as a shield, and with all the nimbleness a single free hand could afford, she unwound the second goose's foot, goose's foot as it pecked and uh, hammered at her leather jacket. The bird was as grateful as a goose has ever been when it was freed, and it showed that gratitude by charging at Marari and painfully nipping at her butt after she stumbled ankles over ears in shock. Nevertheless, it quickly turned and took flight, joined soon after by the initial agitator and headed off south. Marari lost about an hour herding back the kittens she could still find and pressed forward to make camp. The skies were clear out there in feline flats, the northern ones. And as the day settled into a starry night, the kittens found so much reason to just not sleep at all. Marari slept for a few hours, but those hours were broken up by 37 cats zooming back and forth over her stomach with exponentially more weight per paw than should be physically possible for an animal so small. And it was after a night of toe bean liver punches and a late breakfast given to a caterwauling mask of furry rascals who were quite indignant that it had not come earlier, Marari started back up on Small Bean Road. Some were on the inclined switchback to Whittle Muffin Ridge under the towering peaks of the Rocky Mountains. A strange wild black cat wandered into the path of the herd. Its eyes were more were a bit more feral than the rest, but it was unperturbed by their hissing. It stood for a moment in glory, catching a ray of pure sunlight on its glossy fur. Marari could only think to herself, quite unfairly, really, just what I need. Bad luck! 
But the words had not even left her thoughts when a terrible rumble came from high above and swept a small but formidable river of rubble across the road beyond the black cat. And once this rumble made its fuss and settled off down in the valley below, the black cat crossed the rest of the way over to the other side and away into the woods. Harari raised her eyebrow, then tipped her wide-brimmed hat in the direction of the fleeing cat and said, My apologies for my presumptions. Appreciate your help. She tossed a fish for it as a thanks into the underbrush. But this, unfortunately, caused a half dozen of her finest Siamese to scramble from the herd out <clears throat> of sight into the underbrush, stealing away with the fish as they went. The remainder of that day was spent traversing the ridge, with emphatic ps -ps 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 sounds hissed out when the wilder ones got too close to the edge. The day grew dim and the cold before they could break trail down the leeward side and away from the chilled winds. That night was spent in a puddle of cuddles as each of the herd kept each other warm and Marari as well. The next morning would prove the toughest so far. Yeah, Witchery points out, hunting is a waste of energy. If you can't kill the prey, better to wait. Yep, for sure. <clears throat> Um, people seem to think that predatory animals are always, are just always hungry. I blame Disney for this. And then Witchery points out, um, that predates Disney. I mean, if anything, Disney is picking up on folklore. Uh, there are people that think that maybe wildlife used to be more aggressive. So it might have been different. But folklore really, really paints predators as just being constant menaces. Uh, and Uncle Kitty points out ticks. You know, high are the uh, and copperheads are the big, copperheads not a small problem, just rare. Uh, Tammy says good night, good night, Tammy. Uh, also, Witchery said they had to take off. Uh, thanks for coming by, Witchery, and watching. Uh, Gia says cat corralling sounds uh, exhausting indeed. <laughs> And Zombie Wolf's random trivia is each of a dragonfly's wings can move independently, meaning that dragons flies can fly in any direction, up, down, sideways, forward, backwards. They can hover in midair too. How very cool. Jumpstore says, thanks for the stream. I had so much fun thinking of all the little puffballs. Yeah, I enjoyed thinking about cats too. <laughs> I like cats. Um, but if you don't like cats, uh, we have lots of other stuff on the channel that you can check out. Uh, I'm going to do that gross thing where I ask if you guys liked it to like it because uh, last couple of weeks the likes were down and it was reflected in uh, um, the the algorithm was mean to me. It was being a bully. Um, so uh, if you like the stream though, consider giving it a like. And that's all I'll say. Uh, that's a super cool fact um, about uh dragonflies i look forward to your comments at least uncle kitty on the videos and to at some point being able to chat to you again um and jump store tammy and gs and witchery when you're out there i hope you folks have a good week and um, those of you who have injuries and troubles i hope you feel better um <clears throat> and of course genera i hope your job's being nice to you <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for coming by, guys. It's great to have you. And, you know, you can keep hanging out. You don't have to go home. But you can't stay here. Get out of my shop. Mm -hmm.